Hey everyone, welcome to an episode of Matt Math and Games, where I, Matt, am going to show you some math that I used while making some games. Uh, today, uh, we're looking at a spring game I made. Uh, I made this for a game jam. It's a really simple game. Uh, you are a spring, you can choose your angle and you can jump, and your goal is to move around and collect all these stars and then collect that pen way up there spinning joyfully at the top. Uh, once you've collected all the stars. Um, and the problem I was trying to solve while I was making this game was the spring doesn't look very springy. Um, I mean, yes, it, it can get squeezed and it can expand, but when it's in the air, it doesn't boing. It doesn't do like a, you know, like a spring boing. If you just let it loose in the air, it would, it would wiggle and come to a rest. So I thought to myself, I know some equations that can solve this problem. Uh, I have some tools in my mathematical toolbox uh, to come up with a nice solution for this. So here, uh, here are our parameters. Here are the tools I had to work with already. I have this spring, and I have a morph target, which is a way of saying uh, I can make my spring go from looking like this to looking like this with just a number. Um, so I made the spring using Blender, which is some 3D modeling software, and then I made this to go from negative one to positive one, um, and it sits at rest at zero. So right now when you're flying through the air, it's just at zero, but what I want is it to go boing, 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 and go back to zero. So here's what I have set up. Uh, I have time, which on a graph would be like your x value, um, so that's just moving linearly through time, um, and this gets triggered after you've jumped in the air. And then here I have my mesh's morph target, um, and I can feed in a value, and that will uh, affect it. So for example, if I just threw time straight in here, and we jumped, you would see it goes from 0 to 1, and then I hit the ground, and so it cancels it. So that's not very springy. But if we fed this through an equation that made that spring shape, then we'd be ready to go. So let's get out our handy dandy graphing calculator uh, and find some nice equations to use. So what we have right now is y equals x. Uh, we're going to change our graph so that it goes from 0 to, let's say, uh, 10, and then negative 5 to 5. So 0 to 10 and negative 5 to positive 5. So what we have here is just y equals x. Um, as x goes up, y goes up the same amount. When we've gone 1 here, we've gone 1 here. When we've gone 4 here, we've gone 4 here. Um, but what we want is that to have this springy motion. Uh, we want it to, to kind of boing. Um, and you may be familiar with these types of equations, but a sine function is really useful for this. So for example, here's sine of x. Uh, you can see it smoothly goes up and then it kind of stalls out and then it picks up speed and then stalls out at the bottom and it does this over and over forever. Really handy function. Uh, we like that it starts at zero and it goes to one. Uh, the highest it goes is positive one and the lowest it goes is negative one. Really nice equation. Um, so I'll show you how you can play with this a bit. Uh, we could add an offset at the end um, so that we can move the equation up and down. So if we needed our equation to go from 1 to, or from 0 to 2, instead of negative 1 to positive 1, we could do that. So instead of adding a value, let's multiply a constant by our x value and just, let's just see what happens. Ah, so we're playing with the frequency of this wave here, and we're probably going to use values between 0 and 5 or something. So at zero, it becomes, I don't know, it just goes on forever. Whoa! And at uh, one, we're looking pretty good. Now, uh, Unreal uses seconds as our time. So let's say this would be two seconds. After two seconds, it's gone one big bump. So that would feel like you've jumped and then it goes, whoa, whoa. And that's a little too slow. So let's boost this. Maybe we'll have to go f higher than 5. Um, let's say it goes like uh, 
three, three rotations a second or something. Let's make that a nice round number. Cool. And let's plug that into our game and see how it looks. So we've got our x, which is time, and we're multiplying it by b, which is 15. Uh, and then we're just throwing that through a sine function. Cool. Uh, let's see how it looks. Whoa! Well, that's pretty wild. Uh, so it's doing a f full negative negative one to positive one, the whole thing, uh, and just wiggling. So that's a little bit extreme. It's a little bit extreme. But it's doing kind of what we want. Um, but the next problem is it's just going to boing forever. Uh, and that's not what we want. That's a little silly. Let's say you jump off something high. It's just going to boing forever. I have it stop after a certain amount of time. But you want it to gradually settle out. Like if you've ever taken a spring and held it up in the air and just let go. Or put it on a table and stretched it and let go. You'd see it do like a boom, boom, boom. And it gradually settles out. Uh, there's a nice set of equations for that. So we'll hide our old equation. Uh, so we have a constant. Let's call that uh, c to the x or to the negative x. Um, so let's say uh, c will go from 0 to 10 or something. Mm. Now if we spread this out, you could see exactly what's going on. Uh, where this seems to hover around the value 1. It seems to rotate about the value 1, uh, which is really nice for us. Any equation that goes from 0 to 1 uh, is very nice to use, because then you can multiply by other equations, and you know that it won't go off the rails. Because anytime you multiply a value of 0 to 1 with another value of 0 to 1, your result will be between 0 to 1 which is really nice. Um, so we don't care about negative values because those, uh, we don't have negative time with what we're working with. So let's set this back to our nice, nice values there. Cool, so we have this, this value where it uh, starts off at one and then it just gradually goes to zero. It just coasts, coasts on down to zero uh, and that's a constant to the negative x. So a handy a handy tool to put in your tool belt is a constant to the negative x. That's that nice, nice slope. So let's plug just this one into our game and see if that uh, is what we like. Is that, that's what we want. So we will remove these for now. Let's get them out of the way. So that's that's a power function. So we're using power. Our base is our constant. Um, instead of x, we're using negative x. So what we have to do is take 0 minus x so that we're making x negative, And that becomes our exponent. And the base is the constant. Which in this case, let's say we want it to hit 0 near 2 seconds, right about there. So let's say our c is 9.2. Our C is uh, Cool. So what I like to do before I run any code is I say in my mind, what do I expect is going to happen? So I expect that this is going to start off at a value of 1, which means our spring looks, uh, what does it look like at 1? Super compressed. And then it's going to ease on to 0 and gradually get there. So let's see if that happens. Yep. Yes, it does. But that's not what we want either. If you're thinking ahead, you may already be seeing it. We need to use both of these equations. We want it to be springing and have that springing action slow down to zero. So what we can do is combine them. We can just uh, give this one a nice name. Let's call it... Uh, U, and we'll give this one a name. Let's call it G, because those are easy to read beside each other. Just kidding, sorry, not sorry. Uh, and then we just multiply them together. Uh, and we can ignore all this negative stuff, because negative time isn't what we care about. 
and we can zoom in and you can see that when you take this nice graph which goes from 0 to 1 or actually negative 1 to positive 1 which is also a nice range and you multiply it by the blue which goes from 0 to 1 you end up with both you end up with this lovely equation so let's plug that in we can just take our two other uh, values and multiply them together and we should get uh, exactly what we want cool so we'll take time and throw it back in here uh, and then we just multiply these together and let's see if we get what we want Ooh. almost it's acting a little bit weird something strange is happening at the very beginning can you see that it's like yes the best way to graph functions is with your mouth <laughs> ah I see okay so we're starting we're starting with this graph going from 0 to 1 but when you're letting go of your spring if when you're letting go it looks like this right you're letting go boom and then it goes 0 to 1 we want it to keep going and come back right because in my spring this is negative 1 and this is plus 1 so all we need to do to fix that up is invert flip this whole thing on its head uh, which you can do by just throwing a negative in front of it so now right when we launch we're going toward negative 1 which is the direction our springs are already going and then we'll spring around and it should look just fine so let's just multiply this by negative 1 as well and see how that looks and feels I think we got it look at that and if I go over this uh, jump off something high, it'll ease on out to zero. Looks pretty nice. Might want it to uh, to do to yeah, whatever. It looks great. Look at this. It feels so springy. Now it's a little bouncy for my liking, but we've got all the tools we need to tweak those parameters. Remember, we've got uh, B, which sets how much it's springing. Uh, we've got C, which sets how quickly it falls off, which we want to be a little higher than it was. Maybe something closer to 15. Uh, yeah, and there we have it. We have uh, successfully used these nice equations, which we had in our toolbox, to uh, solve the problem of making the spring look really bouncy. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, a little glimpse into the process of using basically a graphing calculator to solve problems when you're making video games. See you next time.